broadly, my area of research is economic theory and game theory as a tool with applications to economics. Uh, I've worked in different areas of, within economic theory, uh, mechanism design, this is this designing institutions, um, questions to do with dynamics and repeated interactions of um, individuals within a market or other institutions. These bring about questions like um, questions of trust, norms. Um, I've worked on bounded rationality, limits to how rational people are and see how our predictions might differ as a result of it. Questions of complexity of behavior comes into it. Uh, also, on uh, the determination of prices within markets, one way to think about these is that prices come out of bilateral trade. So I've worked on these qu questions of bargaining um, in markets and uh, environment and non-market environments. And one last area that has been an important part of my research in recent years has been social learning, where people learn from each other um, and that affects their behavior. And this might re result in kind of behavior that we call, it's known under herd behavior or contrarian behavior. The application, I'll just name a couple of them. Um, I think one of the most important issues in economics and for us social scientists is designing institutions so that the right outcomes may come about. So many things often go wrong because the rules of the game, the design of the institutions may be wrong. Um, so the specific design is maybe critical and that's one application of my work. I'll give you an example, designing committees whether these committees are to you know, run the you know, monetary policy of a central bank, whether it's designing constitution for the country as a whole, um, or whether you know, one is thinking about um, as, you know, voting examples. These are all part of design. What kind of voting method you would like to, so that the desired outcome might be achieved? Uh, so that's one application of mechanism design. The other work that I've done recently um, a year, years has been to do with learning and social learning where people learn from each other. This understanding these may go a long way to explain some of the recent turmoil in financial markets that we actually observe questions of um, market volatility and extreme bubbles and crashes in markets that as we all know it has had profound effect on uh, the life of many people. Um, and the last thing I should just mention in terms of applications, uh, in order to understand society, we have to understand questions of you know, the norms that people obey, uh, the kind of norms like trusts, question of trust, norms. Uh, in order to understand what is the right rule, or, I mean, we, we might have some notion of what is the right rule, but if, we, you know, if people don't behave that way, we have to kind of give them the right incentives so that they behave that way. So, so that's, that goes back to the question of mechanism design. In order to get the right uh, outcome, you have to design your institution so that it gives the people the right incentives so they do the right things. Well, right. the right rule might be questions like, um, I mean, we are thinking about, I mean, let's think about um, uh, corruption. Um, corruption, we would like to avoid corruption. Um, but if the, if the design of the institutions are such that um, you know, it's, it pays people to be corrupt because that actually, you know, they can get away with it, um, you know, we shouldn't be surprised that they are corrupt. So people are usually, usually uh, we think that you know, um, it, it's just bad to be corrupt or it's you know, what the bankers have done five years ago is wrong. But on the other hand, it could be our own fault in terms of you know, the, the kind of incentive structure in the, within the financial services were such that um, these people had the incentives that you know, if they got things right, they would make a lot of money, and if they got it wrong, they would not, nothing would happen to them, and just the rest of society has to pay. Well, this is kind of giving you know, the incentive for these people to, to take undue risks. Um, I've worked in the last uh, five months on three topics. Um, and these are part of my main research uh, agenda. Uh, one has been a question of designing institutions where these institutions have to last more than just one round. 
So you design a committee, you design rules for banks, you design rules for whatever institution one is thinking of, but it's often the, the, the theoretical work in this, in this field, or most of the work in this field, has been about getting the right outcome, assuming that people are just there once. Whereas, in fact, these institutions are there for, it will last a long time. So you want to design these institutions so people don't collude. I mean, the question of corruption, for example, is a collusion among some people who are, you know, who are corrupt. So you have to design rules so that you know, these kind of collusive behavior doesn't take place. So that's been one area. It's called, um, you know, it's the technical terms for it, I work on this area called repeated implementation problem. Um, the second area I've been working on in the last five months while I've been here is goes back to the question of trust and norms uh, that I mentioned earlier. One of the problems in the theoretical literature in this field is that um, the theory has, doesn't have good predictive power. Um, so too many things, we can explain too many things, but that's kind of, you know, it's a success of the theory, but it's also its failure because we can't predict well. Um, uh, so I've been working on uh, this kind of, uh, repeated interactions where actually people can send signals to each other, can communicate with each other, and through communications we try to improve the predictive power of the theory. And the last area that I've been working on is the social learning that I mentioned, people learning from each other, uh, specifically applied to financial markets. And this work I did, I started this work many years ago, about 10 years ago, but the, the early work that I did were limited because we were just trying to illustrate what is possible within very crude models. So the work was recently been about, uh, you know, it wasn't just people can trade, buy and sell an, an asset, a stock or a bond, is they can, um, they can choose any quantity of, um, that they want, they can buy massive amount of some stock or sell large amount of another stock. And whether these kind of being able to vary the amount they can buy and sell, whether that actually affects the conclusions, some of the conclusions that in my earlier work on herd behavior was there. And we actually, the results seem to reinforce our earlier conclusions about herd behavior and the possibility of it.